Jungle is a true story based on an amazing um, novel that I found incredible. And as a movie, it will be one of the great survival stories of all time. When he was 20 years old, Jossi Ginsberg went on a backpacking tour through South America and he got uh, lost in the Amazon jungle with two friends and a tour guide. And halfway into the journey, they realized that the guide turned out to be potentially a murderer, potentially a criminal, and definitely a liar. Several times during this amazing escape story where the cat where he should have died. A jaguar that's hunting him, stalking him the entire way. Deadly fire ants. He almost drowns in quicksand. Incredible storm that almost took up the entire Amazon River. And there are headhunters and cannibals. He almost starves to death. We plan to make it into a compelling, action-packed, incredibly cinematic, very, very visual piece of storytelling. It speaks of the universal ability of the human being to survive in, in, in impossible situations. I'm gonna come pick you up and I'm gonna take you watch and we can talk about everything, all right? Yes, the screenplay does a really phenomenal job of capturing the essence of this amazing book, which is really a sprawling epic survival of the human spirit tale. Good afternoon. So, I was the one, in a way, left behind. I was five days when I really realized that uh, there's no other survivor and that I'm on my own. At that moment, the realization was so heavy that I completely collapsed. And my dream, my lifelong dream, became the worst nightmare possible. Here I was, lost alone, bare to the bone, no provisions, no knife, no gun, no experience in this part of the world. And I was not equipped to deal with such circumstances, let alone this was the, in retrospect, the worst rainy season in a decade, deep in the uncharted Amazon. I was completely crushed by life. You know, I, I was crying. This was like the, the nadir of my life, at the lowest point possible, where I realized what a stupid, vain person I was, thinking I can challenge these elements and be the great explorer. Here I was. So, Total surrender. When you reach such a low point in your life, when you reach the lowest point possible, <laughs> where nothing can get worse than that, there's something, in a way, good about it. Because first of all, it's a total crush of the ego. You know you're nothing. You know you cannot help yourself. But also losing everything. There's an enlightenment there, because when you lose everything, you realize also most of what you had wasn't yours anyhow. If it can be taken from you, it's not yours to begin with. And when you, you lose really everything, you also lose that mask. You, know? you also lose what you pretend all the time. You also lose that sense of shame that sense of inadequacy, that sense of insecurity. It's a tough exercise um, to lose everything. We usually never reach that point of losing everything. But I lost it all. And here I was on my fifth day alone with that realization that there's no other survivors. I have to deal with it alone. 
is a broken man, victim of the worst possible circumstances on this planet. I walk on the cliffs, down river, hundreds of miles away from civilization. For the last four days, I haven't eaten anything. There was nothing for me to eat. I had no gun to hunt. I had no knife to cut or dig. And suddenly, from afar, I see a fruit lying on a rock. And as I look at that fruit, you know, I start walking. It's like really a perfect fruit. It's plump and, and round, and it's not rotten, and it's got no worms. And it's just the perfect fruit, fruit waiting on a rock. And as I, I, I reach to it, instantly I just take that fruit and put it in my mouth. At that moment, something strange happens to me because it seems that for a second I'm just, I, lo I lose my bearings. It feels like an explosion inside my head, just that rush of sugar into my head. And in that moment, there seems to be a, a, like, I don't know if it's an hallucination or what it is, but I hear a voice inside my head. And the voice is like big and commanding. And the voice is saying, get more, get more of that. And I open my eyes and I see I'm under a tree laden with fruit. And I hear that command. So what I do, I jump on the tree and I start climbing. You know, and I grab a branch and I pull my body up the tree and I grab another branch. And here's the first fruit. I'm about to touch the first fruit on the tree. And as I reach towards the, tr the fruit, something moves and something contracts. It's a snake. But not just a snake. This is the deadliest snake in the Amazon basin. This is a fruit snake that upon a bite, it kills. Within 30 seconds, you die. However, if that snake doesn't reach you, it can spit venom into your eyes and blind you. So I'm about to touch that snake. As the snake contracts, something strange happens because I don't have time to think about the situation. So I'm just experiencing the situation. And the situation is that I let go of my other hand. And hence, I'm falling off the tree down to the rocks underneath the tree. I'm talking about five, six yards. But something strange happens. Instead of just falling down and crashing on the rocks, something very strange happens. I'm not falling, but floating. So I can see how slowly, slowly I'm reaching the ground, which allows me to align my body while in the air and just perfectly fall without hurting myself. And as I land perfectly on the rock, my body already moves to the right and left, and I grab a stick. I check if it's strong enough, and I jump back on the tree. Now I start chasing the snake in the tree. The snake is in trouble, not me. And when I get to the snake, I, I take the, the stick. At one time, I hit it, and off the snake flies off the tree in the air. And off, I'm in the air after the snake. When I land on the rocks, I, I grab a rock, and I just one time throw it at the snake, and one time is enough. The snake is dead. I grab the snake. And, I, and, I, and I, I just, with one finger, clean his, you know, just pull his, his, his skin off. And then I put the finger again, and I clean the guts of the snake. And then I'm standing there, and I'm chewing that snake alive. Now, all this just happened. There's nothing of my doing. I didn't do anything. But what I feel now is my entire body throbbing with power.